This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, August the 20th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. And boy, have we got some interesting stuff ahead of us. All right, let's start off with the satellite image this morning. And we do have a good deal of clouds over in the northern two-thirds of the state of Alabama, all left over from uh, the rather numerous convection we had yesterday. On our surface map, uh, yep, it's sort of what we've seen all summer. We have this high-pressure system over the southeastern U.S. coming in across from the Atlantic. But we do see a nice front across the central plains, and while that front won't be terribly strong, it does look like it could make its way our way. In the meantime, in the upper atmosphere, we have an upper-level trough coming across the uh, central plains states, and uh, that will help to push that front down across the southeastern U.S. and will give us some drier air for the northern, uh, oh, about the northern two-thirds of the state, I think. Temperatures across central Alabama this morning generally in the mid-70s, uh, a little bit cooler off to the northeast where uh, uh, we see Fort Payne up in DeKalb County is 70 degrees. Radar clear across uh, much of uh, Alabama this morning, but we do have a little convection across Arkansas and into Oklahoma. Watch warning map is uh, fairly quiet. It's not too bad. We do have some flash flood watches, believe it or not, across uh central and north texas and down into parts of south texas and those flash flood watches are still with that system that produced such a mess in uh, louisiana we have some uh, heat advisories in the northwestern u.s qpf the quantitative precipitation forecast featuring about six inches of rain over parts of central texas and across uh, alabama we're looking at probably over the next five days on the order of about uh, three quarters to maybe one and a quarter inches of rain and not every spot will get it you know the you know the drill when it comes to showers some people get it and some people don't storm prediction center is out looking a slight risk centered primarily on the lower peninsula of uh, or the lower part of michigan the lower peninsula of michigan and uh, that's surrounded by a marginal risk that extends down into the ohio river valley for day two that would be sunday into monday we have a marginal risk from uh, New York across eastern Pennsylvania into the mid-Atlantic states. And then, believe it or not, day three, Monday into Tuesday, we just have uh, thunderstorms of possibility across the southern tier of the United States. And you can see that uh, lack of showers in our area or thunderstorms uh, forecast in our area, and that's because of the drier air. The tropics are becoming much more active in the um, Atlantic Basin. We have Fiona. Now, Fiona is really struggling. We also have uh, Disturbance 1 and then Disturbance 2 out there. Let's take them one at a time. Fiona's struggling, actually expected to be downgraded uh, later today to a depression uh, as the system is rather shallow and just uh, struggling a lot uh, to even maintain its uh, tropical storm characteristics, but continuing on a slightly more westerly course due to the shallow nature of the storm. Now, Disturbance 1 is looking kind of ragged. Uh, this is about 700 miles. Uh, west southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, but that storm is actually got some potential as it moves further across the Atlantic and approaches the Eastern Caribbean. And the National Hurricane Center is putting a pretty high uh, probability on it becoming a storm uh, early next week and into the middle of next week. And that other disturbance looking pretty good as it comes off the African coast. All right, the 060 GFS model run. And uh, there's our trough today coming across the central U.S. And with it, we have a surface low over the Great Lakes area with a trailing front down across uh, the Mississippi River Valley and back into uh, Texas. That trough will move across into the eastern Great Lakes, uh, but its, it's um, amplitude down into the southeast is somewhat weak. So I expect that front to get down into our area Sunday and begin to wash out on Sunday. But it looks like Saturday today and Sunday will be fairly good probabilities of uh, showers and thunderstorms. They're fairly numerous, and a lot of people will get wet. By Monday, that trough is now over New England, and we're seeing the ridge over Florida begin to build across the southeastern U.S. and Alabama. But in the meantime, at the surface, we do have a large high-pressure system uh, covering uh, all the way from the eastern Great Lakes down into Arkansas and the lower Mississippi River Valley, and that's going to usher in some drier air. Dew points are likely to get down into the lower 60s, so that's going to feel good. It won't have a whole lot of impact on the high temperatures. We're still going to see highs in the upper 80s or perhaps lower 90s Monday and Tuesday, but at least the, the humidity will be down. 
Tuesday, I think our humidity stays down as we continue under the upper ridge. But by Wednesday, even though we're under the ridge, uh, it looks like the High has moved off into the Atlantic, and return flow from the south has begun. So once again, showers become a good possibility uh, across uh, central and north Alabama uh, by Wednesday. We're not going to see much change in our weather pattern for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as the ridge becomes the pre prevailing feature in the upper air pattern Thursday. And then Friday, you see that ridge uh, still over the southeastern uh, U.S. and even Saturday is we're just not seeing much change. However, notice what's happening down there in the southern Bahamas. All right, we'll talk about that in just a second. In the meantime, uh, just showers are a possibility across the area as we see a uh, surface high across the Great Lakes, and uh, just that upper ridge being the main feature in our. Uh, prevailing weather patterns, so just diurnal showers are a possibility. But I told you to watch that system. Look what happens by the GFS. By Monday, the 29th of August, it has taken it across the extreme southern tip of Florida and the Keys and brought it out into the southeast at uh, Gulf of Mexico. And then by the time we reach the 31st, it has carried that storm across the central Gulf into the north central gulf approaching the coast of louisiana now am i making a, a landfall uh, prediction here no uh, and one of the reasons for that is and i don't have a map to show you but the european on its last run has taken this same system into the northern bahamas recurving it away from the u.s coast into the atlantic so we have a big variance in the two models by the time we reach uh, the 4th of September, uh, another trough is uh, coming across the U.S., and that's picking up that uh, upper low that is the reflection of the tropical system. And this could spell a pretty wet period. I know Louisiana just needs that, doesn't it? Another wet period. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. Uh, I'll have the next one posted first thing on Sunday morning. In the meantime, you can stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.